verse 440. Do not discriminate saying here is emptiness or saying again here is no emptiness. Both being and non-being are merely imagined for there is no reality corresponding to the imagined. We're concerned with enlightenment practice which in the previous verse was described as mind only. And you think, well, this is correct, isn't it? About emptiness and so on, by saying all of this is empty. It's got no intrinsic reality. This is what the previous verse was getting at, and I think also the next verse about things being made up of atoms, the world being made up of atoms. It's like saying, the mountain in your dream is made up of atoms. So surely it's correct to say, well, it's all empty. It's got no essential substance. In a sense, but we have to be careful. There's a danger with the way I've been describing enlightenment practice. I often describe it as stepping back. Stepping back from our senses stepping back from our moods and whatever other sensations are going on. So it gives you the idea that perhaps there's something to step back from. So this is a danger. I think this is what this verse is getting at. Saying here is emptiness. Here is emptiness. Here is no emptiness. This is truth. Both being and non-being are merely imagined. So thinking in these terms about what is real and what is not real is actually a function of what's called the false imagination. It's when you start thinking about things. I know some very nice people and there's one person, quite a talented artist, who's I think what you'd call a spiritual person. But I, the way I see it, she's very much into spiritual ideas very beautiful ideas you know I can have a conversation with her and she gets inspired and she knows that I'm vaguely connected with something spiritual so she's quite open to me but actually what I'm doing here and what she thinks and what she does are quite different things. Whenever you even start talking about things, even talking about the truth, you're entering into language, you're entering into ideas about truth, you're entering into the false imagination. Unless words can point you directly to your reality, and that's what's happening, then they're spiritually useless. The words are spiritually useless. We need to come back to our own intrinsic being. I call it a sense of being. We can call it suchness. It's when you're full in yourself so when you're not hankering after anything, you're not longing for something out there to give you a sense of completeness. So we're told there's no reality corresponding to the imagined. And the imagined means however you, however you think things are. So, uh, getting back to the danger of what I was saying about enlightenment practice as being a stepping back. Along with the stepping back, there has to be a complete embracing, a complete embracing of everything. Because the idea of stepping back can leave you feel that you're, can leave you feeling that you're, you're cowering in a corner, afraid of attack. No. 
we have to be big, bigger than everything. And it helps if you can bring in a positive element here, a loving element. Embrace everything lovingly. So we don't actually want to reject anything. When you're big enough, the mosquito bite becomes insignificant. So we want to become big, big in our acceptance. And not shrink from things. So in stepping back, we become bigger, bigger in being. We become bigger in being. We're not interested in making statements about reality. We just get into arguments and discussions when that happens. What's the point in that? One final point. In talking about consciousness or awareness, I've tried to bring it into more immediate, practical understanding by referring them to as the attention, because the attention is awareness at work. And this awareness, this attention is often underappreciated. But in talking about the attention, and I've spoken about the attention a lot, it's possible to start developing a certain feeling for it as an object. It stops having its own tone. <coughs> and that tone is how we relate to it. But I wonder if it's possible when we're becoming aware of the attention to detect a smile in the attention. So as you attend, as you attend to this, and as you consider, as you attend to your own attention, Can you notice a smile present, a smile present in the attention? And if you don't notice a smile, can you bring a smile to it? This smile is an indication, is an indication of lovingness.